Hi everyone, it's Tea Tuesday time and that means life with Patty. Oh my gosh, she's such an awesome creator and I just love her. And our co-hostess today is Kathy's Favorite Things. Oh my gosh, she is a wonderful, wonderful creator. And please check out that playlist. So many awesome creators that join in every single week for Tea Tuesday. Anyone can join in. You can put any content up you want. My favorite kind of things to join in with. No pressure on you in this pressure time. Oh my gosh, people are always wondering when I do my shopping hauls how I live on $130 or less a week on groceries, $150 or less on groceries. And it looks like I have no food also. Well, the reason why I can do it, I have a full pantry, a full freezer, and some stuff in the refrigerator. And I do try to stock up mostly on fresh produce, plus I do have a food garden. So that's how I do it. But I'm going to show you how you can cook a lot of meals from your pantry. Now I'm going to be making like four different meals here and it's not going to be all that expensive because I've managed to get it mostly from my pantry. The ragu, as you can see, I have enough ragu, tomato sauce, tomato paste, rice, pasta, all the basic staples you need in a pantry, probably enough for five or six months. I think it's important that you keep a well-stocked pantry. Don't overstock. Don't have so much you got food to gotta throw away. But keep it stocked where you know you have enough to make it. For you don't have to go and to the store every week. Also, rotate your pantry at least every three months to bring all the old stuff to the front and all the new stuff to the back. I find sometimes if you don't do that, you have to throw things away. But as you can see, Grandma tries to stay stocked up. The first thing we're going to be doing is sharing how we put our spaghetti together. The spaghetti sauce here is one can of ragu, I keep saying can, one jar of ragu, and I fill it three-fourths full of water for that water has been filtered. I don't use bottled water. As you can see, I heavily season this. You can season it the most you want or as little as you want. And my husband has a bad stomach, so a lot more seasonings will go in to my spaghetti, not my husband's. I do these first. These are Italian seasonings, onion powder, um, and so on. But you do what seasonings you like. Don't have to do the ones I like. And now let's go back and check on my Spanish rice. Now, I already said before that I make sure I have at least six months worth of rice at all times in my pantry. I try to keep two full bags of rice. They're not giant bags, but they're not tiny ones either. Because I want to make sure I don't have to run to the store every time I want to make something. And rice is one of those things you can make lots of different meals from. And I'm going to be making Spanish rice today. And the leftover Spanish rice I'm going to put into stuffed bell peppers. That video will be up at a later date this week. But as you can see, that's how I feed my family so inexpensively. There's just me and my husband, and I only had two pounds of ground beef for the whole week for meat. Nothing else, and we did just fine. To also put this Spanish rice together, you need a can of tomato sauce. Now you can use a small can like I'm going to use, or you can use a large can or two small ones. I feel that everyone should be able to cook their meal the way they want. Some people like a lot of tomato flavor, some don't, and that's what's better about cooking at home than it's going out to eat. Because when you go out to eat, you are stuck with whatever they put in the food. And if you want a lot of tomato sauce or hardly any, you can make it yourself and do what you want. And the same with the salt content, it's hard also to manage that when you're eating out a lot. Now that I have browned my pound of ground beef and my onion, I am going to use half of it for my Spanish rice and half for my spaghetti. So I've already put my half of the pound of ground beef and onion already in my tomato sauce. Now the other is here with this. I am going to brown my rice because I like it to get a little brown and a little toasty. I think it really adds a lot to it. 
And now you can see I have put my hamburger meat and my onion into my spaghetti sauce in a little more seasoning. I like a lot of flavor in my food and I taste as I go. And that's a good policy to do too. Taste your food a little bit. See how you like it. See if it's how you want it to be. Don't go by what other people do. Everyone wants a little bit different taste to their food. Now we're back to our Spanish rice again. As you can see, my uh, Spanish rice now has gotten a little toasty and that's how I want it to look. And I'm gonna stir it around a few times and I'm going to bring the bottom to the top and let the top go to the bottom for my rice gets a little toasty all the way through. Not too toasty, I don't want burnt rice, but I just want it where you can see it's been caramelized a little bit from the meat and the onions and it gives a, the rice a little more flavor. And of course, Talking about flavor, you want to try to season everything really well to give yourself enough flavor. And if you have family members that want a lot, you put a lot. And if you have family members that want a little, you put a little. A great advantage of shopping and doing it yourself. Because when you do it yourself, you can limit how much you want or how, how spicy you want it. My husband has a bad tummy. He cannot eat a lot of spices. I am, sounds crazy because I'm pretty old. I can eat most everything out there pretty good without too many problems with my stomach. And there's only a couple of my grandkids that can even do it. Most of them have very sensitive stomachs like my husband. That's the advantage of making the food yourself. You can monitor what you're doing. And here are all the seasonings that I put on this rice. And now we're getting ready to put our water over the top. We have toasted the rice. We have turned it over every two or three minutes to make sure that it all gets toasted through and through. Then we add our water. Now you're going to add the water to the top of your rice. I know it looks like way too much water in there, like it's gonna be soggy, but it really is not. That rice will absorb all that liquid and it will be nice and fluffy and moist. And that's what you want. And also, I'm going to add one can, a small can of tomato sauce. This is all it is, is one small. If you want more tomato flavor, add two little cans or one big one. Then what you want you to do then is cover it and let it cook for like about 15, 20 minutes. When you get done doing that, I'm going to put, this is what I do all the time, one meal cooking, I put in however many frozen vegetables I think we're going to eat and corn and I'm going to put it on top and I'm going to recover my pan. After another 10 or 15 minutes I go back and check my rice to be sure it's all the way cooked and that my vegetables are all thawed out and they're warm. After that then I carefully stir them in to the rice and dinner is ready. It's as easy as that but that's how grandma cooks one pot meals and this is going to make multiple meals, guys, multiple meals, because we will eat this rice for at least a couple of days, and I'm going to stuff some bell peppers. And that's what I do. And here's the sloppy joe mix I made, and that had made had eight burgers we made out of it. And here is my spaghetti that we're going to freeze because I am not going to have enough time to eat it because we just aren't going to eat that much food at one time. Because like I said, the sloppy joes are gonna make eight. The rice is going to be making another three meals. And then we're gonna make a bell pepper stuff. So this is all we're going to need for the whole week for dinners and for some of our lunches. Because we double up and eat leftovers for lunch. So, and then I throw some other things in like regular sandwiches and stuff too. And I also buy different luncheon meats and stuff for we have a variety of those. So this is how you can eat on a budget and keep it low. And that rice really was yummy. As you can see, the rice and the vegetables, and yummy was it yummy.